What's going on, everyone? Badger here. Make sure to like and sub, and let's get into this. I got to tell you, after a solid hour and a half of a drunken nerd wars explaining this movie, re reviewing this movie, which just meant going over it in vivid detail for me in the chat, I got no desire at all to watch Madam Web. Didn't have much to start with. What I do have a desire, aside from taking over his show again and doing more Badger Cast, Hail is Gary and Critical Drinker, but right now Gary ripping this movie apart. Let's go. You don't have to know anything about anything <laughs> at all to watch this movie. Can you name the three Spider-Man uh, Tom Holland movies? Nope. Putting on a real superhero costume, not just like one from Amazon, um, is a pretty amazing experience. I got one question for you. Oh. What are those? Spider-Man, here's, here he comes. Here he comes, yes. Premieres on Valentine's Day. Do you have any special plans for Valentine's Day? Yeah. I'm gonna be asleep. Spider-Man, and he's back. Madam Web has no backstory. And so that really gave us a lot of... And, you know, shout out to, like, Tom Hiddleston, who was the only one back in the day who could name all the Power Stones. Everyone else on stage just had a blank look on their face. These the actors don't even watch the movies of the universes, they think, let alone the comic books. They don't do that either. Freedom and all the... And the other one, the last one is... Um, uh, at... Uh... The Goblet of Spider-Man. <laughs> I love action movies. I would definitely do more action films for sure. So, okay, so going into this, I mean, what percent of Marvel movies have you seen? Let's be real. And this isn't meant as a None. negative. Like, again, yeah, just... Uh, four percent. Four percent. <laughs> Which is like 15 the... minutes of one. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I I'll, I'll do anything. <laughs> Nerderotic.com. The Marvels didn't even clear 200 million. I know people think thought it did, but they, when they redid the numbers, only made 199. 199. This movie is going to do less than the Marvels. Let that sink in. Um, Greetings, you over 973,000 awakening go wonders. Gary, in the 975 now. Haven't subscribed yet? We've gone over a lot of bad films and TV shows on this channel, but rarely do we have something this bad a film that will go down in the annals of history is not yeah. only the worst movie of 2024 it is the worst comic book film ever made madam webb makes catwoman look like lawrence of arabia madam webb makes look morbius look like citizen kane madam webb makes the marvels okay let's not go crazy it's as bad as the marvels yet it is also the single best unintentional comedy of the year madam webb is directed by one sj clarkson who was most famous for directing a game of Thrones prequel named Blood Moon that cost $30 million upwards. that will never see the light of day. After watching this monstrosity, I understand why. She shouldn't be allowed within 100 yards of a camera for the rest of her life. As a matter of fact, all cameras and phones should take out a restraining order against her. This is some of the worst directing I've seen in decades, only equaled by some of the worst dialogue I've heard in decades. And S.J. Clarkson had something to do with both of them. Madam Webb had four screenwriters, and I'll remind everyone that just a few months ago, they were on strike for a half a year. Too many cooks in the kitchen, too many writers room, uh, you know, uh, interns, basically. Because they wanted more money, yet this is the best argument for AI. Yes, it's true, we had a lot of trouble finding tickets, and yes, we had to fight off droves of people at the theater as Madam Webb is released on a Wednesday Valentine's Day for a six-day opening weekend. Jesus. By the way, happy Valentine's Day, Mrs. Nerdorotic. And I don't think it's a coincidence that Disney Marvel decided to announce their Fantastic Four casting today instead of at, say, a con or at a Disney event. Oh, and that box office projection for the six-day opening weekend is within the 18 to 28 million range, and that might be a little high. These release weekends keep getting longer. I'm personally holding out for the first 30-day opening weekend. At time of recording on Metacritic, Madam Web has a... This, by all rights, should have gone straight to a streaming service. Uh, I've... <laughs> There's a reason Dakota Johnson left her her CAA agency after just one year, days after this trailer came out. She thought she was joining the MCU, not 
whatever this turned out to be because it's barely even connected to the sony spider-man universe a 30 meta score generally unfavorable and a 1.5 user score overwhelmingly dislike the imdb rating is a shockingly high 3.8 out of 10 and on good old rotten tomatoes the critic score is 17 percent the verified audience is 66 percent oh and i think this is like 15 percent at this point at least the tomato meter and the all audience is at 47 percent all those scores are too high forgive me for stating the obvious although that's what we do here on youtube a lot it's safe for the corporate shill critics to crap on madam web because it isn't disney unfortunately the movie's star dakota johnson wasn't aware of this as my good friend and internet sleuth ryan kittle pointed out both sydney sweeney and dakota johnson tagged marvel studios with their instagram yeah. posts and i agree with ryan's speculation both actresses probably thought this was a marvel studios film and maybe that had something to do with dakota johnson firing her agent just days after the trailer drop the one and only trailer for this film that was ratioed into oblivion and if that wasn't bad enough the review embargo only lifted one day before the film was released hey remember when uh, echo released the in view embargo like hours before it released all the episodes at once hmm, similar tactic never a good sign so is it as bad as everyone says it's worse well i put this off long enough let's talk about madam web because it's no nah, i'm not gonna say web in time that's what everybody's saying it's madam in time <laughs> New York City is a whole time. new level of crazy these days. The film's titular character, played by Dakota Johnson, is Madam Web, based on a character from the Spider-Man books, who also happens to be in one of my favorite. She shoots webs, but not from where you think. Favorite amazing Spider-Man stories of all time. Nothing can stop the Juggernaut, written by the great Roger Stern. Madam Web in the comics <laughs> is a clairvoyant mutant who is old, blind, unable to walk and hooked to a life support device designed by her husband. And according to the producers of the film, doesn't have a backstory. Madam Web has no backstory. And so that really gave us a lot of freedom and all the, I mean, all the, SJ, everybody, the freedom to like tell the story that they felt would be, you know, right now, but still set in 2003 so that you could have the song Toxic. Oh, Jesus Christ. Okay. And Dakota Johnson is just like the Madam Web from the comics. She is clairvoyant, but then they made a few changes. She's not old. She's not blind. She's not unable to walk. She never had a husband to make that life support device, and she's not a mutant. Madam Web takes place in her own universe, which is ageism, sexism. They, what, they didn't have the strength to just do an older blind lady who couldn't walk? They had to make her young and pretty? Okay. Separate from the Spider-Verse, which contains Venom and Morbius. And despite having a direct connection with the Vulture, is separate from the Spider-Man Spider-Verse, which is part of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, at least for now. Did this take place in the larger Spider-Man universe? It's actually not the Spider-Man universe. How would I say it? The Spider-Verse? This is, no, it, it is a completely standalone world. Well, there are spiders. It's like a little bit Spidey, but oh. it's not in the Spider-Verse. Standalone. Uh, standalone, really Madam Web's world. You don't have Great. to know anything about anything <laughs> at all. <laughs> to watch this movie. <laughs> Could you imagine signing on thinking you're actually joining the Spider-Verse? Then they rewrite it like three or four times. Then they tell you, no, no, not only are you not joining the MCU, you're in Sony's shitty spinoff universe. And even that you're not even really connected to. You're just a movie about Amazonian spiders. Now go promote it. <laughs> Madam Web receives her powers in utero when her mom... Mo Molly, 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 Molly. Who was in the depths of the Peruvian jungle looking for a cure for Cassandra's ailment, which is called myasthenia gravis, a neuromuscular junction disease, which is interesting because this film looks like it was directed by somebody with a neuromuscular junction disease. Madam Webb's mom is betrayed and, and shot by take. her assistant Ezekiel. We'll get to him later. Then she is saved by some indigenous Peruvian Mexicans. The indigenous Peruvian Mexican spider men then take her to a spa where she unfortunately passes away, but gives birth to Cassandra Webb. Exactly how do the mythological indigenous Peruvian Mexican spider men who no one has seen because they don't go in the outside world, manage to raise a little girl, get her a birth certificate in Peru, and then somehow enter her in the American foster system? Don't know. And just in case you're worried that the mythological indigenous Peruvian Mexican spider men wouldn't show up later in the film to explain Cassandra her origin, they literally tell the audience and her dying mom. She will come back when she needs some answers. And when she does, I will be here for her. Fast forward to 2003 where this film takes. Someone greenlit this. Someone wrote this. 
someone greenlit this. Someone made th that should tell you the state of modern cinema. Takes place in an all grown up Madam Webb's powers finally activate when she tries to save a man who is trapped in a car. Then she gets trapped in the car, falls into the drink, and it's Madam and Webb in time. You thought we were going to get a comic book movie where some costume heroes would fight a costume villain. Instead, we got a bunch of women running from a costume villain. And to round out our spider heroes who do not become spider women in this movie, who have the collective backstory of different variations of being abandoned by their parents, there's Anya Corazon, better known in the comics as Spider Girl, or Araña, who never becomes a Spider Girl or Araña in this film. Because she's Latina, of course her father isn't around because he was deported. Then there's Maddie Franklin, Spider Woman, who never becomes a Spider Woman. He, he should have entered the country in the legal way. In this film, who is race swapped from the original character in the comics to satisfy the DEI gods and abandoned by her rich parents to be raised by a nanny. And last but not least is Sydney Sweeney's Julia Cornwall Spider Woman, who never becomes a Spider Woman in this film, who's better known as Julia Carpenter Spider Woman in the comics, who is the second most popular Spider Woman to Jessica Drew. She was abandoned after her mother was institutionalized for breaking up with Jessica's father. And yes, all three of the actresses playing these Spider Women are in in their 20s playing teenage girls why do these teenage girls not need to have parents around for this story well we'll get to that but first this brings us to the villain of the story ezekiel a character stolen and absolutely butchered from the j michael straczynski run of amazing spider-man i'm conflicted on jms he's a great writer and i like most of his amazing spider-man run and i love b5 but maybe this is a little payback for creating the worst thing to happen to comics prior to 2016 I did the whole time watching this, it's like, how do they keep getting away with this? Why? And then you see, it's like most of these people don't even know any of the comics they're adapted. Of course, they're told not to, but. And since Seduction of the Innocent, writing the story that erased Peter Parker and Mary Jane's relationship one more day. Anyway, Ezekiel is having visions that the three spider women are going to kill him sometime in the future. And those brief visions, which are only seconds long, are the only time you see Sydney Sweeney and the other two girls I can't bother to remember. Yeah, that's what Drunken Nerd Wars finally was able to manage across, is that if you want to see them all in the suits, just watch the trailer. It's the same amount of time. You never actually see them in a big battle sequence. Just watch the trailer. Remember the name of in their spider women uniforms. So Ezekiel kills a woman, finds a very loyal assistant who doesn't have a problem hunting down and killing teenage girls and a really good computer for 2003 to help identify the three women that are gonna kill him in the future from his visions. Never mind the fact that nobody's questioning the man has visions, and quite frankly, they find him pretty easily. Fairly an inconvenience. Madam Web also features Mary Parker, who's pregnant with Peter Parker, but no sign of Richard, and Uncle Ben, but no Aunt May. Now they almost. And of course, Erwin went through the entire movie not realizing that this is Ben Parker. Almost mention her, but don't. And it's really weird. It's almost like they don't have the rights. So I um kind of and so on. Yeah. yeah. What's this one thing? Oh, serious. Between Madam Webb's horrific directing, abysmal acting, and dialogue that's quite frankly rejected, <laughs> the rest of this two hour film is basically as bland and boring as its plot synopsis. Cassandra Webb is a New York City paramedic who starts to show signs of clairvoyance. Forced to confront revelations about her past, she must protect three young women from a mysterious adversary who wants them dead. His final destination meets the Terminator. But if you're forced to see this sober, there is a way to make it even more unintentionally hilarious. Because the best description for Madam Web is that it's a poorly adapted adult film comic adaptation. And when I say poorly adapted, I mean it. It has all the setup without the scenes of adults doing adult things. For example, there are the narrowly legal girls being saved by the older woman and taken into the woods of Central Park. You don't think this is weird? After that, the narrowly legal girls are left alone by the older woman in the woods in Central Park. Later on, the adult woman takes the narrowly legal girls home to give them CPR training. And if that wasn't bad enough, the adult woman drops off the narrowly legal girls who she just gave CPR training to at a motel with an adult man and his pregnant sister-in-law. <laughs> uh, oh, nice, Gary. Good
Yes, it's basically PG-13 prawn. Words cannot describe how bad this film is. I, I let me refer. Let me. This is how bad this movie is. Is that even Gary's in, in, review is painful? That this is a shitty movie when even Gary and Perry can't make this this good. Like this is not. How did this get made? Is the entire time is what I'm thinking. How did this get made? Is and honestly, it would take a Mahler esque type of video to explain it, which uh, I'm not willing. I to don't even think I. And I've watched. 20 hours of him on The Force Awakens and The Last Jedi. I don't think I could take Mahler breaking this movie down. Thing to do because I'm not watching this film ever again. Right. You can't I, undersell how bad the directing is. It's the worst I've seen in decades. You will get motion sickness from watching Madam Web. Now, I may have been a little insensitive earlier when I insinuated S.J. Clarkson directed Madam Web like she was under the long-term effects of a neuromuscular junction disease. That wouldn't be entirely truthful. A more accurate description would be the cinematographer suffers from palsy and filmed every scene while having a grand mal seizure. The explanation for the two-hour runtime of essentially a bunch of girls running from a bad guy is explained by Madam Webb's ability to see into the future, which allows the directors and producers to pad the film with a lot of repeated scenes. And all those girls you saw in costumes in the trailer, it all came from visions and it took up a grand total of one minute of screen time. And don't get me started on Ezekiel's audio dub from Tahar Rahim, who I don't blame. It was like a poorly dubbed Japanese to English film from the 50s. There was obviously a problem. They were trying to hide him speaking. But when words were being said, I, I don't think it matters if you heard everything he said in perfect crystal clarity. Shite movie be shite movie. Often, it didn't match what was being spoken on the screen. But nothing will compete with the film's ending. The bad guy is killed by product placement. You heard me right. Ezekiel is crushed to death by the P from a Pepsi Cola sign. And it's the choice of a new generation. Go watch this movie instead. And all of this culminates into the origin of Madam Web. No, not the powers she got in the beginning of the film, which are essentially an enhanced form of spider sense. No, Cassandra Webb becomes crippled and blind, and she seems pretty happy about it. Oh she also gets God. a costume. It was like, what are these glasses? Exciting and um, felt really cool. And, you know, I mean, putting on a real superhero costume, not just like one from Amazon, um, is a pretty amazing experience. Oh. <laughs> Still, after all that, I have some questions. Why are indigenous Peruvian Mexican men who possess the power of a spider and exposition just hanging out in the middle of a jungle? Why didn't Central Park burn down when the three narrowly legal? Because obviously that is where Peruvian Mexican spider people hang out. The jungle girls left without putting the fire out so the next time you're in the forest be extra careful okay surprise motherfucker and someone needs to explain to me how cassandra webb who had an apb out for her because she kidnapped the narrowly legal three teenage girls was able to adopt him at the end of the movie. If madam webb isn't connected to any spider verse why in the hell is it taking place in 2003 oh we have an answer to that. Set in 2003 so that you could have the song Toxic. Why would you try and fail to make Sydney Sweeney ugly? And a bonus question, why in the hell couldn't the women look like this in the film? Why does director S.J. Clarkson keep getting work? Why do the writers of this film, Matt Sazama and Burke Sharples, keep getting jobs? Who thought it was a good idea to put Madam Webb in 4,000 theaters, including IMAX, turning it into IMAXiPad. And how in the hell did it make $6 million in its opening day? And the biggest question is just, why? 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 But at least we know the answer to a couple of questions. We now know why Disney Marvel released the casting of the Fantastic Four and released an X-Men 97 trailer today. And hey, it doesn't look that bad. I am a, you know, Gay, adopted, black kid who grew up in the South or survived Florida, as I say. Or they decided to show a little bit of a different side to themselves this season. We're going to go with the change lady. Well, so much for that. And you can't say Madam Web was any worse than the canceled Batgirl, but you can say Batgirl is the third most profitable superhero film in the last calendar year. <laughs> 
Yes, Madam Web is a hilarious disaster. It's also the pinnacle of female superhero cinema. Madam Web is going to be a horrendous flop even at its $80 million budget. And quite frankly, that's a good thing because it was released on Valentine's Day and it avoided a national divorce day. Unfortunately for me, I thought I'd multitask and mix a little business with pleasure and take Mrs. Nerdrotic to see Madam Web on Valentine's Day. Just, we talked on Twitter in, in public. I'm not that popular. His marriage did survive the watching, even if he walked away in flames. And according to the poll I just ran, I'm going to be set on fire. Yeah. If you like what you heard, please like, share, and subscribe. If you didn't like what you heard, I got some good news for you. This is probably my last video. On Madam Webb, I certainly hope. Um, yeah, make sure to like and sub to him. This was painful. This was really painful. We can't keep letting them get away with it. Someone asked me, how do we save the franchise? You got to fire all these people. You got to stop letting them fail upwards. Uh, just bad. Just bad all around. That was that was all the, way, all the way painful. Even reviewing it and memeing on it, it's not fun. It's not funny. It's not fun. Uh, please, go over to Gary's and subscribe. He's, he's at uh, 975 right now. He's 25 away from getting that 1 million and beating Dan Bass. So he doesn't have to sing that Bon Jovi song as funny as that. I think he said he would do it anyway, but he's, he'll put it on, on the Twix. But uh, yeah, let me know what you think of Madam Web. I'm not going to see it. After after hearing Nerd Rage talk about it, after watching this, I never want to hear it about it again. I don't even want to watch it on streaming. I'll watch maybe the fight scenes when they go on YouTube. That's it. That's it. Uh, well. Bye.